we first bought this property, um, didn't really have the goal like, hey, I'm buying this land, I want to start a farm. It, it kind of just came came on to me. Um, when we bought the land, you know, I said, okay, I want to utilize it as best as I can. You know, let's get some chickens, let's do some things, you know, just have fun with it. But never really thinking, like, let's start any kind of business with it. Um, but, and then that's when I started doing my research. I was like, you know, they have farms out there that are doing direct to consumer farming, you know, selling chicken, selling eggs, doing pigs. So it, it was just a matter of research. And then that's when I came across the regenerative agriculture type of farming. I didn't want to take the approach of getting a large loan and have a big chicken house and just producing for Sanderson Farms or Tyson uh, because it's not really giving much back to our community or our environment. Um, so that's where I, I'm starting to, I guess, fall in love, I guess you can say, or the idea of the regenerative agriculture type of farming because you're, you're giving back to the land, you're, you're caring for the land and then in return, the land is actually providing you with some quality product. In our case, it's chicken, it's eggs, and it's pork. Well, I do have a full-time job. So I, I, I've been telling people lately I have two full-time jobs. I have the farming job and then I have my off-farming job. So I get up really early in the morning, you know, five something in the morning. The daily routine is to get out there and feed, feed all the animals. You know, we have chicks in our brooder, which is right behind me. We have about 230 chicks. We need to make sure that they're all good. You know, they have food and water. Uh, they have the appropriate heat uh, because chicks do need to um, have have heat to um, to thrive properly. And then uh, I'm going out towards the back. We have uh, about 165 laying hens. Uh, that same thing as well. Got to feed them every single day and we have pigs. We have six pigs on our farm right now and we are feeding them. They eat a lot. So that's my morning. I do that before I go to my second job. So we have a lot of eggs that we collect every single day. That is a non-stop deal. They don't stop laying. So you got to continue collecting and cleaning. So. Pretty much, you know, you, what you're doing is you're utilizing your property, you're utilizing the land, the animals, and, and you're using them in a way that they all work together. I guess you could say, for example, uh, how, we, how we operate our, chicken, our chickens, uh, we have them out on our pasture and we actually move them every single day. So by moving them every single day, that is fertilizing our property because the chicken you know has manure on the property we are then taking the the chickens off of that manure manure because we're moving them that's allowing that previous day to regenerate okay so it's gonna provide a healthier ecosystem for that area where they pass and then also the chicken is getting fresh grass in return and then when we go to pass them Again, later on down the road, we do have to let it rest for a certain amount of time. When we pass them again, that area where they were weeks or months before is now better than it was before. Kate. Kate, come walk through the water. What? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yay! <laughs> this is Kate's favorite spot. <laughs> So they're, they're about two, two weeks old right now. They got another week in here. They're in here for three weeks and then we put them out in the pasture for an additional five weeks. Uh, we have some nesting boxes in there. This is kind of where we started with the eggs, but our bigger flock is back here. Uh, we moved these as well so you can see like this is where they were a few days ago there's like not much grass it's almost bare dirt they wear further back but you can see how it, the grass is actually growing up so they're now in a new spot 
and we're gonna let them kind of mow it down and then we're gonna continue to move them. So it's just constant moving. That's another daily thing to try to keep them in. The sacrifice that we take for having our birds out on a pasture system is that, you know, we know that we're gonna lose them to predators, but we do get a better quality egg. You know, if most people just put them in a coop and lock them up, but uh, yeah, they won't ever, probably won't ever get attacked by any kind of predator, but it's not the best quality egg and it's not the best life for the, for the hen. Yeah, so we just, just starting out with the pigs. Um, we have customers for, for five of these pigs right now. How we sell our pigs is um, we bring them to the slaughterhouse for a customer and then uh, we pretty much give the customer a whole freezer full of meat. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I think yeah, he's put her on a few of their backs sometimes. Yeah, when it's nice and they're not dirty, I'll, I'll just go plop her on uh, one of their backs. She has no it. choice but to grow up to learn to love them. Yeah. I really enjoy just being out there, you know, on a really nice day. I've told my wife many times, even though I busted my butt all day, I'll tell her I really enjoyed today. But the, I guess the biggest reward is when we have our customers, you know, come back to us and say, that was the best chicken I've ever had. So, you know, you, you're putting in so much time and effort into something, and then when someone says that they enjoy you know what they received from you that right there you know that's probably one of the biggest things I want the community to realize that if you do a little bit of research you can make a connection with that farmer with that family rather than just going to the grocery store and buying off the shelf and God knows where it comes from it can even come from overseas I'm trying to make a connection to our customers and I want our customers to make that connection with us